I can pull focus uh, with this monitor setup as is in a really nice, convenient, compact way. All right, people, let's get into it. I am Garrett, and every once in a while, there is an innovation that takes place that solves a problem that I didn't know that I had. I was content doing the thing that I was doing, and then this new thing comes along, and they're like, well, we now do this thing. And it's like, well, geez, now I need that thing because that solves a problem that up until this point, I didn't even know was a problem. And it's very irritating because then once you know it's a problem, it then just drives you insane. And that's kind of uh, what I'm most excited about in today's video. Today, we are looking at the uh, Feel World F5 Pro. Now, what I'm actually most excited about for this monitor has nothing to do with the monitor itself. Full disclosure, uh, Feel World did send this to me for my review, but in no way uh, am I obligated to say anything nice about them or this product, though I inevitably will because I'm very excited about it. Um, all of the thoughts and opinions are my own. Most monitors and monitor manufacturers at this point do a really good job of making good monitors unless, you know, they're actually terrible. But this one has everything that I have grown accustomed to that Feel World has to offer uh, with one big added bonus. All right, so the first thing is the uh, foldable collapsible sun hood that obviously same as uh, the last Feel World monitor that we looked at. If you wanna see an in-depth tutorial on Feel World monitors and the UI and that kind of stuff, link up over there. Uh, but foldable, nice. It has the really nice matte felt cloth uh, on the inside and the rigid plastic on the outside. Very, very nice. Then we have the monitor itself in a bag. Packaging. Uh, this is a full HDMI type A to micro HDMI cable. We have the standard 90 degree bracket. It looks like that. And then there is the frame for the sun hood with the uh, male Velcro around the outside. So that's great. This apparently is a disassemble wrench for part of the monitor. So that's the accessories. Let's move this out of the way and let's look at the monitor. Now, looking at the monitor itself, it is a 5.5 inch display, the same as the last Feel World monitor that we looked at, uh, slightly bigger than five inches. I really like it. It is touch screen in the same way and the menus and functions are nearly identical. This is slightly different because across the top here, we have two custom function buttons. So if there are tools or settings that you really want to access often, you can toggle those. There are arrows here as opposed to a roll rolling, scrolling wheel, the menu button up, down, and power. So that series of buttons is there, which I like. I like having tactile. I don't necessarily like a single button menu navigation. But between that and the touch screen, there are a hundred ways to control everything, which is great. There is one, two, three of the quarter 20 ports. Again, it still has that same plastic where it's recessed. And so you can see kind of, it's got that brass threading on the inside, uh, but you kind of got to get into it a little bit before it'll catch. I kind of wish that these were uh, metal, kind of the way that it is on the back here where there's the metal rivet instead of uh, just the plastic. But minor complaint. And on the bottom here, there is the uh, DC out. So this is an 8.4 volt out. So if you have a dummy battery in your camera, you can power that off of the battery here on the monitor, a headphone jack to monitor your audios, and then the uh, five volt USB type C uh, in, so a DC in as well. On the other side here, we have the HDMI in and HDMI out. If you've watched this channel at all, you know that I am a big proponent of loop through capabilities, that way you don't have dead points anywhere in your rig. So the same video signal that goes into this will come out of this. And speaking of that, this does take 4K in up to 60 frames per second, even though the display is a full HD 1920 by 1080 display. Next to it, we also have a DC in, which is a DC 12 volt uh, in there, which is in addition to the five volt uh, type C DC in there. I gotta figure out why there's two. Moving to the back. Now this is 
What I'm actually most excited about for this monitor is the backside. So on this side, we have the standard Sony L or NPF series battery plate. It's the same type of battery that controls pretty much all of your standard uh, video accessories with the exception of anything that's running off of like V-mount or gold mount batteries. Uh, those look like this. This is the big Mac daddy boy. I like having large batteries because uh, I don't wanna have to change them out all the time. So this guy uh, would slide right into there. But what makes this thing so cool is the other side. This side, so this is a dummy battery, meaning that you can plug in any NPF uh, capable accessory and run power to this off of this, which then treats not only as power, but also as a mounting point, right? So I'll show you. We have our battery, okay? So we have a battery in. Perfect, now we have power. The other thing, this light still is on all the time. I don't know, can you see that? There you go. So even when there's a battery plugged in and nothing going on, there's always this LED light that's on and that does drive me insane. I wish there was a way that I could just turn the LED indicator off because I would know when the monitor's on or off based on the screen. But if I you wanna use an accessory like this, which this is the uh, Mars 300 Pro, if you wanna see the video on this, uh, link up there to that. But if I wanna connect this here, I can, slide it in like that. So now not only do I have power to this from this battery, I also have a mounting point for it, right? It's locked in right here. It's not going anywhere. And so I don't have to worry about a secondary mount for an additional accessory. This makes it really great as an on-camera monitor because if you have your wireless transmitter hooked right up to it, you then don't have to have another mounting point for that. All right, quickly, I just wanna go over some of the features that this monitor has to offer. If you're familiar with Field World monitors, this has all of the same functionality as those. Nothing is going to be surprising to you. If you're not familiar with them, uh, here's a quick rundown. With this monitor, if I double tap the screen like this, the whole menu is going to come up on the side here and it has literally everything. I have histograms, focus assist, peaking color, embedded audio, overexposure warnings, exposure levels set to IRE for false color, field checks, turning false color on and off, nine grid, safety frames, center marker ratio, it, just everything, every possible thing that you could think of you have in this monitor from that standpoint. So again, double tapping brings it up, double tapping makes it go away. There is a quick menu, if you swipe up from the bottom, where you have access to some of just the core functionality pieces that you might want, and then you can tap the screen and also make that go away. On the left side of the screen, uh, if you swipe up or down, you can adjust the brightness of the monitor. In the same way, we'll pull this up again, there we go. In the same way as on the left side of the screen, a swipe up or swipe down from the center is going to adjust the volume. There are the two function buttons across the top, which are set to aspect ratio and histogram by default, as well as left and right arrows. Over here, there is the menu button, which if you press is going to bring up that same menu over there, press it again, it will go away. And then there are up and down arrows. So if you wanted to, you could navigate the entire menu without the touch screen between the up and down and left and right arrows here at the top. And then of course the power button. This is the uh, EOS M that I hacked to shoot raw and I can put this on here and then I can take my microphone and go to the cold shoe right here on the side. And so now I have my monitor, power, wireless transmitter, and microphone all mounted on one mounting point like so. And then if I wanted to, I could take that DC port at the bottom, put a dummy battery in my camera and have one single NPF battery that will power this entire rig, which gives me a larger screen that is touchscreen that has all of the professional monitoring capabilities that I would want. This is fantastic for single shooters that don't have fully built out rigs or cages for their camera gear because with one mounting point, you get a ton of functionality. And of course, the HDMI ports are on the same side from the transmitter to the uh, monitor here. So I can take one of these tiny little uh, ultra slim cables. Again, uh, links below to these. I use 
use these all the time. The cables are thin, the lengths are super short, and it keeps my rig nice and tidy. And unfortunately, this camera that I'm using this on is a, a mini HDMI, not a full HDMI. So, you know, I have this big, long, bulky cable. You can see why I like these cables over something like this, but uh, in theory, this guy would connect to that and back in. I wouldn't really use this as an on-camera monitor, for me personally, for the way that I shoot. I usually have my cameras fully rigged out on rails. Uh, there's cheese plates, there's tons of mounting points. Like, I don't necessarily need something to be this compact for my shooting style. It might make perfect sense for you in that regard, but where I see this monitor shining is as a director's monitor or as a first AC monitor. Now, if you don't know what a first AC is, a first AC is the first assistant camera operator. They have a lot of responsibilities in the camera crew, one of which being pulling focus. You can probably see where I'm going with this. This monitor having this built-in integration is something that a first AC could hold onto and not have to worry about having a huge ton of rigging or a ton of weight. Right, again, you can get smaller batteries if you want. I like to have, especially if I'm powering both, long battery life. So let me show you what I did. So I have this monitor here, which has a receiver unit on it plugged in and the battery. And then I went and uh, rigged out a handle, a Nucleus Nano uh, mount, as well as a monitor mount from Small Rig. Again, I'll put links below to all of this stuff here. If my job is to pull focus, I need to have one hand free, so that way I obviously can use the focus wheel, uh, which looks a little something like this and then I can take this end and put it right here now this is a fantastic first AC monitor setup because I have my receiver I have power I have a decent sized monitor I have my hand wheel I can view the screen and I can pull focus perfectly, especially with the sun hood. So now this is a 500 nit monitor, which was one of my issues with the other. It's not very good in daylight. It's not very bright. It doesn't have a whole lot of knit to it, but with the attached sun hood, it should help to a certain degree to where I should be able to view this in decent lighting and see what I need to see. But again, it's nothing crazy to write home about. I can pull focus uh, with this monitor set up as is in a really nice, convenient, compact way where it's not adding a ton of weight. My first AC can hold this without getting arm fatigue. They can pull focus. And with all of the professional monitoring tools that are built into this, waveforms, vector scopes, focus peaking, zebras, all of those menu options that you would expect in a professional grade monitor, this monitor ticks a lot of boxes for uh, not a lot of money. Speaking of not a lot of money, this monitor sells for 140 American. I think for the money, this monitor is probably the most interesting one on the market in that it's a nice size, it has all of the functionality that I would expect in a monitor, but this plate on the back here that allows me to mount any sort of accessory that's NPF capable onto it makes this so compact and lightweight. I don't have to worry about additional power for this thing. I don't have to worry about additional rigging for this thing. Whether you use it as an on-camera monitor or a director monitor or a first AC monitor, this compactness and neatness makes that incredible. My only issues with this monitor are the same issues that I had with the last Field World monitor. I wish that these uh, rivets, these quarter 20 ports here, had metal plates on the top and bottom as opposed to the plastic. I just feel like it's at risk of being over cranked and crack if it is plastic. So if it were metal, I'd feel better about that. Uh, this dim LED light, I wish that I could turn off. There's no reason for me to have it on, uh, especially if everything is powered off. And then the only other thing is the brightness. You know, it's a 500 nit monitor, but it's a 500 nit monitor because the price is what it is. So I understand that. But if it was a little bit brighter, I'd feel a little more confident being outdoors and shooting with this monitor. But beggars can't be choosers. And I think that the pros far outweigh the cons. So if you are a solo shooter and you are looking for a way to streamline your kit or to simplify your kit or to make your kit more lightweight, this is a really good place to start. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, do me a favor, give this video a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit subscribe and that bell. And if there's other pieces of gear that you want me to look at that I haven't yet, comment them down below because I always want to make sure that I'm looking at stuff that you find interesting. And as always, 
I'll see you in the next episode.